in this video, I'd like to walk you through implementing root guard. For root guard, let's imagine that switch three is the root of spanning tree. And if there's any BPDs coming in from switch four that say, hey, the better bridge ID for a specific VLAN is over here. If we want to ignore those, we can put root guard and enable it on these trunk ports right here. And if one slash one and one slash two are enabled with root guard, if superior or better slash lower BPDs for any of our VLANs show up on those ports with root guard enabled, no matter how low the bridge ID looks, these two ports are gonna say, nope, I'm not having any of it. And they'll protect the switch on those two ports from believing that the root is reachable out either of these two ports. And that way with root guard, we're protecting against some external switch off of either of these two ports from becoming the root of our spanning tree. So with that in mind, let me walk you through the implementation of root guard down here on ports one slash one and one slash two. So let's go to switch three. And just for grins, let's take a look at who the root is. Let's do a show spanning tree root, press enter. And currently the root for all these instances of spanning tree is not switch three. So if we look at the cost, the cost is four and the root port is gig zero two. So that means from switch three's perspective, the root is reachable off of gig zero slash two, which also based on the cost here of four, currently the root is switch two for all of these VLANs. We could also verify that just by making a road trip over to switch two and doing a show spanning tree root press enter. And sure enough, the cost here on switch two for all these VLANs, the root cost is zero, which also means that switch two is the root. And if we just show spanning tree, looked at the details, it would show as the root for all the spanning trees. So if we go back to switch three and we just show spanning tree and let's take a look at VLAN 777. And this shows us that currently ports gig one slash one and one slash two are designated ports forwarding away from the root. So what would happen if somebody over here on switch four made switch four look like a way better bridge ID for some of these VLANs, including VLAN 777? That would cause switch three to have a topology change and choose one of these two ports as the root port and blocking on the other. And it would no longer believe that the root bridge was reachable off of gig zero slash two. So if switch four is in a wiring closet somewhere or it's connected to an external customer and we don't want to have to worry about our topology at layer two changing because of BPDUs that are coming in, we can simply put on root guard here on one slash one and one slash two. So if we have root guard enabled on one slash one and one slash two, no matter how good the BPDUs look like coming in from switch four on these two ports, switch three is not gonna make a topology change and not gonna believe that the new root is reachable off of either of those two ports. So to demonstrate that, let's first go to switch four and let's make it the root for VLAN 777. So to do that, based on our spanning tree skills, let's type in spanning tree VLAN 777. We'll say root and primary and boom, that will lower the bridge ID enough so that switch four is now the new root. So if we go back to switch three and just a moment ago, those were two designated ports, gig one, one, and one, two. Now we hit the up arrow key and press enter. Now those two ports, one is a root port and the other is an alternate port. And we no longer believe that to get to the root for spending tree for VLAN 777, that we're going over gig zero slash two because effectively our layer two topology has changed. So back on switch two, let's type in spending tree VLAN 777 root primary, and that will cause it to win the election back. We'll go back to switch three and hit the up arrow key just to verify that once again, our root port is now gig zero slash two going to switch two. And we are going, because we're using the original flavor <laughs> of spanning tree, we're going through the listing and then the learning state. And then finally, after a moment, we'll go to forwarding. So one slash one right now is in listening. If we hit the up arrow key and press enter, it's now going through learning state, fantastic. And after a few moments more, it'll be a designated port that is forwarding. So with IEEE, the 802.1D, it's 15 seconds for the listening state, then 15 more seconds for the learning state before it can go into a forwarding state. So now that that second 15 seconds is done, if we press the up arrow key, it's now in a forwarding state. So now let's configure ports one, one, and one, two with root guard so that if switch four pulls that trick again, at switch three, we won't believe that the root for that spanning tree is available off of either of those ports. So here on switch three, to configure these two ports, one slash one and one slash two with root guard, we'll go into configuration mode. Then we'll go into interface configuration for both of these at the same time, one slash one and one slash two, using the command interface range. And then we'll type in gig one slash one through two, press enter. Then we'll type in spanning tree, space question mark. And to implement root guard on these ports, the next keyword here is guard. So with the access ports, we use the command BPDU guard. And for root guard, we're gonna use the keyword guard. So we'll type in G-U-A-R-D space question mark. 
And then what type of guard are we going to implement? So the feature is called root guard and the actual syntax to implement it, unfortunately, is guard root. So we'll type in root and a space and a question mark. And the only option left now is to press carriage return or enter. So now we have console messages that root guard has been enabled on those two ports. And now if we do a show spanning tree for VLAN 777, and then specifically for interface gig one slash one, space detail, I press enter. So I know that was a mouthful, but I wanted to narrow it down to just the spanning tree for VLAN 777 and just the interface gig 11 and look at the details for spanning tree for VLAN 777 on that interface. What it's showing us here is that root guard is enabled on the port. So if we go back here to switch four and hit the up arrow key and you see the same command, spanning tree VLAN 777 root primary and press enter, it's gonna try to win the root election, but switch three is having none of that off these two ports with root guard enabled. So if we go back to switch three, here we have our root guard violation right here on gig one slash one. And if we did a show spanning tree for VLAN 777, press enter, we still have our root port going up to switch two. And on these two ports, gig one one and one two, where we have root guard enabled, under status A here has the code for broken. That's what BKN is, it's broken. And over here on the right, we have the indicator for root underscore INC, which is a shortcut way of saying root inconsistent. So if we have root guard on these two ports, we should never be able to reach the root bridge over these two ports. And that's why these messages are here on these two ports is because switch four with a better BPDU for VLAN 777 was trying to influence our topology. But once again, switch three on these two ports was having none of it. And if we looked at the details on either of those ports, that would also tell a story. So we do a show spanning tree VLAN 777 for interface gig one slash one and the keyword detail and press enter. So here we got the instance of spanning tree for VLAN 777 for interface gig one slash one. Here's something broken, which equates to this message we saw earlier in the output as well. It also confirms here that root guard is enabled on the port. Hey, thanks for watching and subscribe right here to get the latest information from CBT Nuggets. And if you're new to or considering a career in the world of IT, head on over to CBT Nuggets and sign up for a free trial.